Well, howdy, friends. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. <clears> throat> well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshig of Mad River Outfitters and the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another episode in our series on fly casting. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Josh Trammell of Ohio Fly Fishing Guides. And Josh does a lot of guiding out of boats. You have a raft and the jet boat, and you guide out of boats a lot here in Ohio. And you had mentioned to me a while back that you would love to participate in one of these episodes uh, so that you could teach some things that you could share with your customers mm -hmm. that could better prepare them for a day on the water with you fishing here in Ohio and then of course for the folks watching if they're ever fishing out of a boat I'm sure you're about to share some great tips so uh, you know what take it away maestro thank you sir yeah one of the main things that I see a lot of people do from a boat when they're first starting out is they forget about their backhanded cast. Now when we're when you're a right-handed fly caster and you're going to the left bank going downstream that'll be your, your normal forehand cast that everybody's used to just like that. But when we want to switch up and we want to go towards our right side most of the time we really don't want to be casting over the boat like this if we can help it. Reason being is we've got a very, very sharp hook, at least we should have a very, very sharp hook on the end of our fly line and we don't wanna be casting it over our fishing buddy, over our guide, over our significant other. We just really wanna refrain from doing that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna just turn ourselves around and we're gonna make what's called a backhanded cast. So it's essentially the same cast that you're doing over to this side, all that you're gonna do is change your trajectory as well as where you're looking and where you lay it down, all right? I kind of refer to this motion you're doing with your hands like you're swinging a, like a ping pong paddle or a tennis racket or something similar to that. We don't wanna, never really wanna turn our hand and go like this, you can see my, my loops are very, very wide. I don't really have the greatest accuracy. So I'm just going to turn the back of my hand towards my target and almost pull towards my target as I come forward towards that right side. You can see I'm still going kind of to my 10 to 1. This would be more 2 to 11, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you just, all you've done is just you've changed the clock. You've yep. just rotated the clock around. I mean, it's still, it's still a 10 to 1, 90 minute stroke. Yep. 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 All that's really changing is your direction. Yes. Right? Up cast on my left side and my down cast on my right side. Now, if I want to switch and I want to go over towards my left side, it's the same exact thing. Just opposite. Going up cast, back to your right, down cast down to your left. So you've got more of your two to 11 and then your 10 to your one. That's what a lot of people struggle with is I, I see people when they switch over to this opposite side, they try to open up their hand towards your target where you're using a whole lot less muscles that are just in your forearm here. Whereas you have a lot more control and power kind of pulling towards your target. When you say yeah, and the one of the key words that you use there, and I use this a lot in teaching, is trajectory. Mm -hmm. And if you're casting this direction, the trajectory is like this. If you're casting to that bank, you're just changing the trajectory like this. Yep. The key is that you've got to focus on keeping the rod tip traveling in a straight line path. And for some reason, people can visualize that this direction, but as soon as they start doing it backhanded, it, the stroke gets more ovalized, you know? And like you said, the loop opens up. Right. You still have to think of that 90 degree stroke, straight line path with a rod tip, you're just changing the trajectory 
um, and, and you're just changing, changing the direction. Yep, yep, exactly. So from the front of the boat, per se, that's gonna be your, your backhanded cast to the right side of the river, like so. And then we do our forehanded cast, see if I can not get into a tree, to our left-hand side and vice versa for the top of the boat or technically the back of the boat. I think another thing, I, it, I'm, I'm sure if you have more, but I think another thing that's really important for folks uh, casting from a boat is is a is a roll cast pickup. Yeah. Too. Definitely. I mean, and and that's really an important uh, f from almost anywhere. But when you do a, when you can do a roll cast pickup or just like a pickup from where you are right mm -hmm. now, you can just you can just roll cast it to get it started, <clears throat> and then start the progression of the cast. Right. So roll cast, pick that it up needs. and go. That's a, uh, for, when you're fishing from a boat, that is a very, very important uh, starting point for any cast as well. Definitely. I wouldn't say it's an every situation. No, 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 like, no, no. For instance, today with our popper fishing, if we were to, if we were to roll cast it like that, Mm -hmm. and rip it, mm -hmm. a lot of times we'd make a lot of noise. But That's for very a lot true. of the streamer fishing applications, yeah. which is most of what you're going to do from the boat, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And, and sink tips. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, sink tips, uh, that that roll cast pickup can be very important uh, when you're fishing from a boat. But yeah, you're right, with the popper stuff that we're doing today, it's right. uh, not so much. Um, one other thing that's gonna help casting from the boat as well, um, for both sides, is instead of trying to keep your cast way way up in the air here which is going to do a couple things for you most likely you're going to get caught in the trees we're not fishing for squirrels parrots or, or monkeys or birds no yeah. uh, it's not really something that i'm too interested no. into keeping a little bit more of a level plane on both sides you can see here if i want to go to my right side do my my backhanded cast just like we went over and i'm keeping it more to that level plane one thing that Brian always stresses as well is watching your cast. It's a whole lot easier to watch your cast on this more level plane than it is way, way up in the air like this. So pretend like you're almost spreading butter level to the water. I like that analogy. Right in there. Like butter. Yeah. So this just allows you to get under structure, which especially for our warm water game here in Ohio, we have a lot of structure. These smallmouth, these pike, whatever around here, they love, love, love structure and shade and trees provide shade. So a lot of times we're trying to get in tighter places and you know, you may not have the ability to do a straight up overhead cast just like that right into uh, the spot that you're trying to target. So keeping a little bit more level plane, like you're spreading butter, just like that, is gonna help you watch your cast and also present the fly in a little bit trickier uh, situations like underneath trees and uh, in between boulders and, and things like that. Another thing that is kind of more specific to our smallmouth fishery and things like that is, uh, is angles of presentation. Um, I see a lot of people kind of struggle with this um, as the season goes on, but especially during the conditions like what we have today in the middle of the summer where things are very, very low and clear, these fish are pretty spooky. You know, if they hear us coming, if they see us coming, you know, if, if they see us waving our rod up in the air like that, most of the time they're gonna know what's up and they're gonna spook. So keeping your cast kind of out in front of the boat or what we call kind of a downstream angle is key. And it's also gonna help with, with your technique um, as far as fishing goes. So I'm keeping it kind of off the corner of the boat here and, and the front angler will kind of, kind of keep a line more from here going right down towards the camera, just like that. But keeping, keeping out in front of the boat, that's gonna just help with your presentation a lot. And the way these fish eat, 
during this time of year. They're they're inhalers. They they don't they don't usually come out and turn right away. They usually come up like they were doing today with the poppers. They come up and they suck it in. So if you can have that angle downstream and when they come and suck it in, when you set upstream or you set straight up in the air on them, you're going to have that current that kind of keeps your line tight and keeps pressure on them here. Whereas going to a 90 to the bank right in here, you're going to have a whole lot of slack put in and that fly and that fish is going to come straight back at you very, very quickly. That kind of makes sense? Yep. What I'm saying? Yep. So keeping that downstream angle is not only going to help with your presentation and your numbers of hookup ratio, especially on a day like today where it's high, high sun, low, low, clear water, that kind of stuff. But it's, it's going to help with keeping a fish pinned, especially a big fish, you know, that's bulldogging and, and pulling and stuff like that. So keeping it down uh, and out in, in front of the boat and a good distance away from the boat is, uh, is very, very key. So one other thing that I want to talk about as well is kind of line management and stuff like that when we're when we're out of the boat. It's it's a pretty easy thing, but it's it's something that I see a lot of people struggle with, especially out of the raft when we're in a little bit tighter space. One thing that's going to help you greatly when you're casting and you're retrieving in line, don't move your feet. That's the easiest way to not get it wrapped underneath your feet and to not step on it is just to Keep your feet planted. A lot of times in the raft, we'll have a, a lean bar that you can lean into. I stress a whole lot that people lean up into that bar, so that way they really don't have to move their feet around when they're casting. You know, they can they can strip on top of their toes and you know on top of their shoes, and it's it's not going to get tangled. But when you're when you're repositioning yourself, you know, after your cast, you're going to end up stepping on it nine times out of ten. Wouldn't you say? I see that a lot, and it drives me crazy sometimes because all you got to do plant your feet in a nice comfortable position lay that line down and then keep those feet planted right where you had them especially when you're going to retrieve that line in when you're streamer fishing that way we won't get all wrapped up so there you have it friends some great tips on fly casting out of a boat uh, from a guy that spends most of his life in a boat. And just to summarize, he talked about basically changing the trajectory. You're still making a 90 degree stroke here, 10 to one on a clock face here. If you're gonna cast that direction, you're just changing that angle. Now it's uh, two to 11 on that same clock face and you've changed the trajectory. This part is the upcast this part angles down. Again, the word trajectory is a word that we use a lot in fly casting. And just because it's an upcast doesn't mean it has to go up, okay? It doesn't have to go up. We're talking about trajectory. So the other thing that Josh talked about is keeping your angle low here, more level to the surface of the water. And it's still an upcast and it's still a downcast. I got news for you. The trajectory is still angling up off the rod tip. I've just laid the clock face down here, so the number two and the number 11 are laid out in front of me more level to the water. The other thing that Josh talked about, when you're fishing from a boat, instead of fishing even with the boat, try fishing off the nose of the boat at about a 45 or a 60 degree angle. You're gonna get better presentations, you're gonna get better drifts, you're gonna get better pops, and then when the fish hits, you're gonna get better hook sets, okay? And also, that fish just doesn't even know the boat is there yet. And then, of course, always plant your feet. In fact, when you're fly casting, don't move anything except for basically your, your forearm. You don't move your head, you don't move anything. Yes, when you are casting, when there's a lot of overhangs and stuff, you wanna look behind you and watch, but don't move your feet, move your body as little as possible. That way the line's never gonna get caught under your feet. You'll be able to shoot no problems and uh, <clears throat> it won't get caught under your feet, which is a big problem with a lot of anglers fishing from boats. So as always friends, we hope that helps you out at least a little bit. Thanks as always for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss an episode. 
Special thanks to Josh Trammell. You can check him out over at OhioFlyFishingGuides.com. And stay tuned. We've got a lot more fly casting coming your way.